When it comes to smart contracts, security is one of the top priority of it. Today we're going to learn what a re-entrancy attack is and how to protect your contract from these attackers and scammers. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Calvin and this is Alchemy, where our mission is to bring blockchain to a billion people. So remember to smash that like button, subscribe to stay notified, and drop a comment down below if you found this to be helpful. So what is a re-entrancy attack? A re-entrancy attack is an exploit of a smart contract where a hacker finds a vulnerability that allows them to execute a function and they call it over and over again until they withdraw all the funds from the contract. So let's get into the code. Right here I have two contracts that I'm going to show how a re-entrancy attack may look like and how it works. On the left you see we have a banker contract that mimics a bank. So we have a, a mapping that's going to keep track of all balances. We have a deposit function and a withdraw function and then a get balance function. Pretty straightforward. Now on the right, we have the attacker contract. This is where the meat and potatoes are. Right here, how this works is it's gonna import the banker contract and it's gonna have a tack function and a receive function and two uh, get balance and then a modifier. So what this re C attack is, is it finds a spot in the banker contract where it can exploit, uh, execute a piece of code, run it again and again and again and drain the funds. In the attack function, the first line is it's going to deposit some ETH into the bank because in the bank function, we have a require here that says you need to have some ETH in this bank to be able to withdraw. So you need to be a customer. So the attack function says, okay, let me throw in some ETH in there so I can show you that I'm a customer and then I'm going to withdraw. Then since there's ETH in the bank, you're able to execute the withdraw function. The withdraw function goes to this line, line 31, where it checks, well, it's already checked you have ETH and then now it's going to send all that ETH to the caller. This is the important part, this receive function here. Is, think of it like a callback in JavaScript. So anytime this contract, the attack contract, receives funds, receives ETH, this block is going to execute. We just call the withdraw function and we got our money, we got our ETH, and because we got our ETH, this receive block is going to execute immediately. It's going to check what the balance of the bank contract is. If it's greater than zero, it's going to call withdraw again. See, this is where that cycle is, if you see where I'm going with it. It's going to call withdraw again, checks if the balance is greater than zero, and it keeps withdrawing until the balance is equal to zero. And then it hits this else block and then you get paid or the, or the contract gets paid. Why that's able to happen? In the banker contract, we have this line 31, uh, which is where they pay the caller. And because the tacker function has the receive function that's like the callback that executes every time they receive funds, line 32 never gets executed. So it stays on line 31 in the banker contract until they get drained, that is where the reentrancy attack is. It's because the state of the bank was never able to be resetted. So the attacker was able to exploit that and keep calling it and keep calling it and keep calling it until they drain the entire bank. So to display how this works, I wrote up a quick script. So here what I'm doing is I'm deploying the contract, pretending to have some customers, putting in some ETH. So the bank has some funds to drain. I do some sanity checks to get the balances, and then I do an attack here. So we're gonna run this script, and let's see what will happen. Um, npx hard hat run scripts scripts.js. Right there. So we check to see the balance. Attacker balance starts at zero, and then we launch the attack. First run through, the banker balance is at 22 ETH because the attack, the attack remember the attacker balance, we, we threw in two ETH so we can prove that we're a customer. 22 ETH and then it drains two ETH at a time. As you can see, keep scrolling, scrolling, scrolling until it hits this point where the banker balance is at two ETH or it thinks it's at two ETH. It's never able to execute line 32 where it resets the state of there we go of the of the balances so the bank thinks it still has two eth in actuality actual attacker balance is at 22 eth so it drained the entire bank so how do we solve this how do we solve 
this re-entrancy attack and protect ourselves from it. Uh, well, there are two solutions here. In this case, one solution is we just switch the code. So line 32 and line 31, we just swap it. So that we make sure we always update the state before we call anything external. That way, when the attacker tries to call withdraw again, their account balance has been reset to zero. So they, the bank's like, hey, you don't have any money to pull out. You can't pull anything out. And we'll run the script again. Boom, right there. So what has happened is we've deployed the, um, the contracts. Once we launched the attack, um, lines 31 and 32, after we swapped them, the balances were able to be updated first before we send the funds. That way, when the attacker tries to attack again, they can't because they don't have any funds in the bank. So this error right here, that's how we tell it didn't work. Second way to update it is there's actually a contract that you could import from Open Zeppelin. So the uh, package that you install or import is uh, reentrancy guard. And in here, we want to make sure we inherit from it. So we write is reentrancy guard. And then in your withdraw function, this is where we add our modifier non reentrant. So what this non reentrant modifier does is essentially it makes sure that when a function is called, it can't be called again. You could look into the contract and there's a boolean there that keeps track whether a contract is i'm um, not the contract whether the function has been called or not if the function has been called it flips the state and therefore not allowing it to be called again so to run it back you learn what a reentrancy attack is you learn how to spot one and you learned more importantly how to solve and fix and protect your contract so if you learned something new please drop a comment down below remember to smash that like button and subscribe to stay notified i'll see you in the next one